Greetings, everyone. Uh, the chat has spoken today, and we're actually going to jump right into a course at 2020 draft. It is back. It is the uh, current alternative on Arena to the current front-running format of Eldraine. And chat was like, yeah, we want M20. So we're doing it. Uh, of course, M20 is ranked only, so this will be best of one. And we're going to revisit uh, all the greatest hits from M20 here. And if you need any of the greatest hits from M20 for your latest standard deck, commander deck, or uh, whatever, maybe you want to grab some boosters for Chaos Draft, you can go right up to cardkingdom.com via my affiliate link down below in the panels, of course, because that's how you let them know that you watch this stream and, like me, that you appreciate that they sponsor it. Uh, that's how you can let them know that they're putting their investment in the right place in me, and you can put your uh, card investment in the right place in them and know that you're going to get exactly what you're looking for, and you're going to get it fast, and it's going to be just what you're expecting, and I love that reliability. So thanks a lot, Card Kingdom, for all your support, and remember to uh, purchase from them via my affiliate link if you want to uh, uh, tip the cap to this stream. It's a really helpful thing to do. Thank you. You asking me, Combustionator, how so? Or you're asking uh, Fenor? Well, white was never really where I wanted to be in this format, but a Johnny's pretty powerful. Um, we have four of them. It's also 40 gems, so we're probably just taking it for the 40 gems. Hard to pass up for that. Stacked pack. I like the Spectral Sailor a lot. Uh, we got the memes for that as well, of course. Uh, Moldervine Reclamation is one of the engine cards that makes uh, green, black a good deck, in my experience. Of course, Murder is an incredible uh, removal spell for the black decks. Pack Mastiff, a fine two drop for red. You know, uh, Bear plus with upside. Lavican Brawler, one of the key cards in the Elementals deck. And Scorcher plus Lavakin Brawler is absurd, for example. Uh, Pacifism is good removal for white. Like this is just even Dawning Angel is playable. This is this is quite quite absurd. Quite absurd. But yes, uh, at the very least, gems and uh, perhaps a Johnny in the main deck. But I'm I'm down. Like I like white blue flyers well enough in this format, but there's not a lot of other white combinations that I've had a lot of success with. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, sealed, you would be so happy with this, right? You get right into that uh, elementals. And anyway, well, we'll take a Johnny there here. There is no greater treasure than quiet times with friends. Whoa, a Johnny going deep. Um, this is also the Heart Piercer Bow format. We're not sure where the, I can't even remember where the bots are at or if they've updated them. Um, yeah, we can take a uh, bow on spec, especially if we do it. If we ended up uh, blue white flyers, it's a great place for the bow. And then a Johnny is played. There's nothing much going on here, is the thing, right? Like Angel of Vitality is an option. Um, so I think it's probably uh, Vitality or bow. You can pull this. Do a quick pull. 15 on bow or angel. Or I'll say other. If you really think it's other, we can uh, talk about what the other might be here. But I don't, I don't, I can't see anything. Like maybe you want to get started on foot soldiers or something. Yeah, Scott, that's why I was saying uh, I, I like the bow and blue white flyers a lot because it gives you access to the uh, to the weaponsmith. All right, Angel crushed it. I'll do it. Yeah, and a Johnny does do life gain, so maybe there could be something we head towards there. But I don't, again, I don't want to marry a Johnny. We'll see what happens. Chandra's Outrage leaps out at me here as the best card. Um, Apostle of Purifying Light is whatever. If we wheel it, that's fine. But uh, in best of one, where you don't know your opponent is black, it's just whatever. I think we take the best card here, which is Outrage over Ember Hauler, I think. I like the Ember Hauler in Heavy Red, but man, that Red Red, when you want to be dropping these things on two, is pretty oppressive. Um, game sounds on the loud side. I can uh, knock that down a touch. You know how that is. That's the thing. We hear the same things, but I think I hear them at slightly different volumes from you guys. So I'm always uh, happy to take feedback on that front. Um, 
Gorging Vulture also does the life gain thing. Uh, Griffin. It's too early to take Griffin, Scott. If we wheel this, I'll be fine. But I don't, I don't, I, I'm not taking a Griffin here just because we have some white cards when there's an outrage. We'll take, I, I'm going to stop messing around. Soul Salvage and uh, Vulture are also nice. And you could go Vulture looking to wheel Soul Salvage potentially, although I think the bots even take Soul Salvage now pretty highly. But I'm going to go with the powerful removal spell uh, and see. Although now I uh, see this audacious thief, and that makes me want to go in that direction. Uh, Corpse Knight is uh just okay it's good you know but i think if we end up white black or whatever black uh we i think we want this thief um yeah we could even abandon both these white cards and end up uh, black red thief from here and there's some you know great synergies uh in black red with the thief with the uh goblin uh i'm forgetting card names now but the uh Two and a red for a 2-2 two -two that has haste and taps to uh, make something two power unblockable. Smuggler, thank you. So, yeah, I'm going to take Thief. Love me a Thief, and we can see where that goes. Um, well, this is an interesting spot, because Aerial Assault is a solid removal spell for the white deck. Uh, Pack Mastiff is a great slot-filling two-drop. Uh, Gorging Vulture... Uh, again, does the does some life gain if we did be end up uh, kind of white-black. And um, Blood Soaked Altar is a nice build around. Uh, if we want to hope, you know, lean towards white, yeah, we can take Aerial Assault if we really want to play a Johnny. Uh, I almost think, though, that like we want the Vulture to head towards black white life gain and that the Aerial Assault. I think it's vulture or uh, vulture or assault. Let me pull fifteen vulture assault. See what you all think. I guess I'm leaning vulture, but I guess eh, maybe assault because it does. If if we want to try and do white life gain, it does gain some life and it cuts white. Like one of the ways to try and make your white deck work out here is that uh, the you cut it from the bots going downstream so that at least you get a strong second pack. Interesting. Yeah, there you go. Tied 5-5. Five, five. So one good thing about when 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 it's this close, it kind of means that probably the impact on your overall event win percentage is pretty minimal, depending on base, which way you go here. Uh, but I'm going to go with the white card and at least try and uh, cut white, cut good white so that we have hope of getting good white on the way back. Here's a bow we could pick up. I still like it better than cutting this white. I don't, cause I don't think, again, this is quote, good white. <clears throat> Altar is a completely reasonable reasonable pick, very build aroundable. Uh, we could take bone splinters here. Uh, but now that I've gone a Johnny, Angel, Ariel, we're really um, looking to only draft white cards that begin with A. Uh, I guess it's just, we, we only get to play cards that begins with A, then we can play the uh, thief as well. No, I'm just saying, um, the thief also we're not married to, so like Bone Splinters goes with the thief, but Heart Piercer Bow probably the uh, probably the most um, open thing to take here. So I'm going to take Heart Piercer Bow over the Bone Splinters because I don't know how committed to black we are. If I if I were 100 percent that we were black, I would uh, I would take the bo the Bone Splinters. But yeah, we could also take Apostle to stick with the Ace. <laughs> No, I'm not backing into a stip draft that forces the picks that much. We'll take a bow and see where we go. Well, uh, Fathom Fleet Cutthroat is, uh, goes along with the thief and goes along with the bow. It's great with the bow. Uh, <clears throat> Barons would be good, but I'm not... I'm, I, you know me, I love, a, I love good mana, but... And even though it gains life, though, I don't think we want the land over the spell in this spot. Um, Inquisitor stays the most open, but it's also the most replaceable. But it's also the most cut white cutting. Um, Sprite keeps us open. Mm, Sprite broadens the things that are tempting us, but I don't think the Sprite is enough better than Cutthroat or Inquisitor to justify adding an, uh, yet another color to our mix when we have a, a solid Cutthroat, especially with the Thief and the Bow in our pile, and the Inquisitor, which seems to be in our main color. 
Um, yeah, so I think it's like, to me, I think it's actually like Barons versus Cutthroat. And I'm going to be spell greedy right now and take the Cutthroat. Sorry, Barons. Blue looks open to you. I haven't seen great blue, though. Like, there have been blue cards in the pack, but nothing that's making me go, ah, I wish we were in blue. Like, this is a classic example. Nothing here is making me go, ah, blue is where we should be, even though there's three blue cards. Here, I'm going to take Soul Salvage. I feel like I'm settling into uh, uh, black-white here. Yeah, this is pretty meh. Uh, when when an opponent plays this, I'm happy, and I think it's very difficult to find the life gain uh, to to make this a successful build around. This is like a build around D, which is to say, in some extreme cases, I could imagine actually having the payoffs to run run this, but it's at like a a, a D <laughs> D to F minus level. Much more interested in something like a Daybreak Chaplain. Also, not an amazing card, but uh, fundamentally just so much more playable in a deck like this than the uh, uh, than the the Soul Mender. But Lavakin Brawler this late is almost in, like this is a the Brawler Wield, and that's huge. And we have an Outrage. It's it's like this is so good. And this is actually so marginal in the abstract. It, it gets so much better in life gain. But in the abstract, this is pretty marginal, and this is excellent. So I really want to take a look. We have an Outrage. So, like, it might be correct to take the Brawler, since the only, the opportunity cost is just this Chaplain. And uh, we end up having the ability to back into, to listen to what the boss is saying. Never heard of you. A rap so yeah, Mastiff is also solid. I mean, I think Brawler is much better. But Mastiff being solid and in the pack as well uh, suggests that we should keep red open here. Yeah. So let's, uh, we can end up literally in any of the three color pairs from here if we take Brawler, because we have, you know, three white cards we like, three black cards we like, and two red cards we like. So, um, yeah, Mastiff is even better than Chaplain. I agree. That's the thing. Uh, Chaplain is only is playable in white and only good if you're really doing life gain stuff, which we kind of are. So there, there's that. Uh, but I think we brawl here and stay, stay open. And uh, yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. Buckeye Boomerang with the six months. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh, we have an opportunity to another bow. Uh, there's this Blade brand as well, but. I think we take, well, we're, we're nowhere near blue, uh, but I think we take, since we're only in pack one, we take bow number two uh, because we can uh, up the priority of these cutthroats, which get amazing with the bows. And uh, if we get another bow, uh, we, we get, it starts to get good just in density. Like once you can get three or four bows, even if you don't have the uh, weaponsmith, you just end up drawing enough of them to close your opponent out of being able to like play two toughness creatures and stuff and that it becomes so powerful when you have two bows and every every two toughness creature your opponent has is effectively dead uh, a dead draw so we'll take that um best of one probably not ever gonna main either of these we could take the raptor if it you know if we get stretched a little thin and are, are low on playables we can run the raptor although it's uh in the bow meta, it's really not a great choice with the four mana, one toughness. You're just asking for it with, with bows everywhere. Uh, we could also take the barony vampire and have, like, I really don't want to play this card if I can help it, though. Like, on I've only really happily run this when I've had the uh, Soren as well. Hey, Marsh Viper, what's up? Uh, so, but I will take the Raptor. It, it, it's high risk, but we can... Uh, uh, we can ri we can risk it. We'll take a blade brand here. Blade brand is not a combo with heart piercer bow. If anybody is wondering about that, uh, the bow does the damage and the creature gets the death touch. So that's why that doesn't work. All right. Well, maybe we'll get some direction in pack two. But I like how we drafted pack one. Wow! <laughs> Come on, what? <laughs> I, 
Are you kidding me? This is just like the uh, magic god saying you have to, isn't it? Trouble is outrage isn't great here. Like, I, I really want single colored spells, but... <laughs> So, yeah, we happen to open a mythic that's like on uh, on our three colors. All right, well, we're going to take it. I don't know how we splash, though. How do you splash? Like, this is just so irresponsible. I mean, no, I don't think mythics wheel. I don't think I've ever seen a mythic wheel. Yeah, I got to draft eggs. That's the thing. It's not gem. Well, it's uh, it's not gems as much as it is uh, set completion. I don't. We we have three of these, so we could go if we wanted gems out of it. We could go convert. But I'm I'm happy to just uh, slowly you know fill out some more M twenty. I know. What are we losing? Like, what are we what are we giving up to take this? Well, grave digger primarily. Uh, pacifism. Ancestral Blade, Mastiff, another bow. Uh, we do have uh, Angel of Vitality. Mainly, though, it's like taking the Mythic, and I'm just going to do it. I want the Mythic. We can decide if we want to uh, play it but I am going to do collection building side. Maybe we'll go and uh, convert it and get some gems out of it. Oh, it'll never wheel, never wheel. Uh, here, Griffin Protector, just Agonizing Siphon. Yeah, Agonizing Siphon is good. Uh, it does the life gain thing if, uh, if we end up still leaning into that. Uh, this is another brawler, but I think we should just uh, Move towards the black, uh, black white more heavily here. If we play, you know, we could do black white. Try and splash Kalia if we think it's worth it. But I don't. I don't even know if it's worth it. I just, like I said, I wanted the. Uh, uh, I I I always take mythics. Fenlurker pushing us towards a heavier black bent. Um, Master Splicer is quite excellent. Um, don't have like self-bounce or anything. Brought back is interesting, but we'll just take the splicer here. Quite good with what we're doing. More scorchers. I don't think we're a scorcher deck though, despite the brawler. Uh, we have uh, M20 rares for X, but not that like that is our fourth copy of that mythic, for example. Um, and I'm, again, I'm kind of switching my modeling from pure gem grind, like ignore constructed to trying to model what I think more players want to do, which is have fun with limited while building their uh, building their libraries, building their collections toward 4X. So that taking this and not crafting it for gems and just taking it as a filling up mythics is a is a good modeling of that behavior yeah we'll take griffin protector here sorry i was talking about meta philosophy there of account management we already have oh we have only one soul salvage we can take another soul salvage. i think we're gonna wheel one though maybe we just want ancestral blade because of that Yeah, I think we take Blade and just wheel the salvage. This is a bear I can get behind. Effectively. Uh, we're doing enough with lifelink that I think a moment of heroism makes some sense over like a raise the alarm. Eternal Isolation doesn't always have a target, but I think has has it often enough to take it and play it over Angelic Gift. I see the curve. Doing pretty good on curve. 
you know, pretty, pretty dense. Heavy at four, probably not playing this Raptor, and we can effectively, like, I will leave the Seeker, I'll leave Kalia in, but if we don't get, like, more angels or demons or something, you know, we might not, we're probably not even playing her either. Yeah, pick nine bow would be nice. There was a bow in our opening pack, but we're going to uh, take the isolation and then take pick nine bow. Ready? Here it is. Boom. Yep. We're going no blue bow. No blue bow. Gift here. Take Griffin Sentinel. Wears equipment and bows nicely. I don't like the Aegis. Yeah, Hannah, that's what that's what I'm now I'm I'm moving towards modeling and recommending um is that uh you play you play on your main account as much as you can to, until you 4x is set, but you should be kind of also juggling a side account that you can switch to when you 4x your main account. Anyway, I'll get into that more on Monday, but yes, basically that's what I'm thinking of. Uh, that's no, that's easy to take that and take that. I'm not gonna play that, I'm not playing any of this. All right, how about another crazy on color mythic in the rare slot? Well, it's a rare, I guess we take it. Uh, it has some real drawbacks in uh, in limited. Get pacified and you're just like really feeling it, but you drop this on uh, three and often it just uh, just kind of wins. Was I supposed to take a golem? I I don't think just because we have uh, master splicer that we're supposed to take bad five drops. So take Reggie. This will be a, this is this is turning into a real uh, real interesting draft. <laughs> Gotta say, it's been funny. Um, nothing here amazing in our primaries. I guess we take Blood Burglar. It does have a, a life link. It's a on attacks. It's a two. You, oh, Angel, sure. Yeah, yeah. This is not, this is better. We'll try and wheel this Burglar. I I was thinking of this as a different card. I'll take the Angel. This is a stacked as heck pack. We can just get bow number four, but at pick three, it might wheel. Feels like bow has wheeled so far. Uh, disfigure, amazing removal, vampire, lifelink, but one toughness, it has the bow, bow issues. Audacious Thief and Disfigure leap out at me as the clear best cards here, though. Uh, Aerial Assault is life gain in its removal, but if we want to take removal, we take Disfigure. If we want to take uh, best <coughs> creature, we take uh, the Thief. I think I will uh, pull this one. Those are two good cards. I want to see what Chad is thinking about. So Thief and Disfigure is where I'm at. Let me make sure I spell it right. I'll say other in case... Give people uh, with strong opinions a chance to like suggest bow or whatever they're thinking about. One vote for the thief. I thought the thief would get a little more love than that. Um, but it's not like we have any murders or anything, so I th I'm down with chat that. Uh, we're not going to play these gifts, right? I think these are all likely playables. I think this would be our deck right now. Well, I don't know about this Kalia, although we did, yeah, we did pick up another angel. Doesn't make it correct, but we did pick up another angel. Siege Breaker for that red splash that we can't really support in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, we just take a siphon here. Now, I think, honestly, if we're honest, this is the deck. If we were to run it right now. I like another Cutthroat, uh, maybe over even a Protector. I think Cutthroat does more in a three-bow deck than a Protector. 
And again, best of one, so I don't want the Blight Beetle. Very late Tomebound Lich, but it's going to get even later because we're not taking it. Uh, we could take uh, the Epicure of Blood that works with a lot of our life gain. But uh, Inquisitor is better on the curve, although it's not like we're hurting on twos. I don't even know if we'd make the cut currently. I don't know if Moment of Heroism is going to make the cut. Um, here, let me... Are we playing Epicure, though? Yeah, I don't even know if we're playing it. I'll take the, uh, I'll take the cheap drop. If this did it equal to the amount of life gained or lost, it, it would be amazing. We'd absolutely snap it up, but uh, it doesn't do that. So it's it's maybe playable if we end up with one in a later spot, but I don't think we need to take it here. Yeah, the first striker's fine too, right? A fine bear. Gauntlet of light. We're not doing this, but it's vault progress. Not going to main deck this in best of one either, but we'll take it. Here's a Vault Progress pick or Inspiring Captain or Skeleton. Is this really a skeleton deck? What are we doing with Skelly? Regisaur. Regisaur Skelly is a combo. Let's take Reg Skelly for the Regisaur, right? And Skeleton with Bows is good too, yeah. We just... Bo came back. Got some choices to make now. Alter doesn't generally wheel, no. Sixty gems on the grind. Put that in today in the spreadsheet here. So unusual color pair for me. We're not often in uh, white black in this format, but it's kind of what the packs told us to do. So we're gonna see how it goes and figure out what our Final cuts are. No, this is uh, this is just a normal M twenty draft. I'm gonna cut the protector. Let's also look at overall numbers. Twelve, only twelve creatures. So maybe not cutting the protector, but I still think I don't really like that. Card. Oh, Ancestral Blade is a creature, so that's like a 13th creature. Maybe we cut one of these. Um, Blade Brand got better with the Skeleton pickup. We want to keep the site both siphons because of the life gain theme. So I'm going to cut isolation for sure. Um, I'm just looking at this. We're not cutting this, but I'm looking at our removal suite in general. Like this aerial assault could also be on the block. Yeah, maybe Combustinator. One of the things that we're doing, like the, the heart piercer bows take up a lot of room in a deck if you're going to do the four bow plan. And it makes, you know, trouble is it makes your, it becomes your removal. So then like, maybe you don't need quite as much. Like maybe we do actually, yeah, we cut the aerial assault because we're actually using um, bows is our removal. And then even probably cutting one of these again. Uh, one of these two is the final cut. Right, we just have a lot of removal in cutthroat, that kind of thing.
I think we cut the moment of heroism. I like the idea of the lifelink, but Blade Brand at least cycles. Um, so if it's not a useful combat trick at the moment, you can get a card out of it. Uh, I like that. I like that fail case a lot. Um, and then... Um, <clears throat> Zenith, help me with a good name here and then we'll play. Uh, here, yeah, that's reasonable. Although it's a little spoilery. I think we'll call the deck, I'll call the deck Hardly Knew Ya in, uh, in the title, but we'll, we'll name it fully here. And I think 9-8 is correct. We have a lot of color requirements on both sides, so split with a lean towards black with the lurker here. And uh, let me go to a par pole. Yeah, I don't know how you play Kalia in Mardu in this format. There's like no way to fix it all that I can remember. Um, All right, here's your par pole, and we'll get on it. Ah, the mutt, sure. Yeah, if we found a scuttle mutt, I might have been able, been more inclined to try Kalia. But those of you who listen to LR, as you heard, it's pretty ludicrous to try and splash anything on fewer than three sources of mana unless you're intending to come close to kind of get into the bottom of your deck. So even with a mutt, I don't know if I like uh, mutt, two mountains, and, you know, Oh, did you leave that comment too? I was I, I was gonna say uh, I I don't think you could call me a deadhead. I think you could I, I think a fish head would be a fair label because I like I like fish that much. But I, I would call myself a fish head with a a great deal of respect for the dead. This looks great though. Uh, we get skeleton. Uh, Skelly wears bow nicely, and we have the throat uh, to work with the bow nicely as well. We have our best card, easy keep. Just need some land, but we at least have both of our colors. Uh, we can attack first and then uh, drop a bow. I guess they could have something like, uh, you know, raise the alarm, but we don't care if they take out a sanitarium skeleton. We'll get it back. All right, what we now want, of course, is land. Hit us with a land, please, deck. Then we can decide, if we get land, we can decide equip, cast, or just drop sentinel. Uh, now I'm going to cast another bow.
and we can at least set up for eventually having this thing attack and uh, bolt things. Come on. Ugh. All right, well, now I'm going to cast a third bow so that if we find a land, we can equip three bows and take out the eagle. So our deck is not cooperating on the mana, but we're still functioning. They could dump some flyers here and with the eagle make it really rough. That's a bold play with all the bows out. What else have they got? Okay. Well, didn't get the land to equip three, so we're going to equip two and take out the fencing ace. Unfortunately, then uh, I think we're just dead now. Like, this has gone on too long. Uh, they get to eat the skeleton is the problem, but we got to take out the fencing ace. So how do we win now, given that we're losing the skeleton and basically losing it for a while because we don't have the mana to get it back? We basically need to drop Angel of Vitality and then get it hooked up with three bows. I think we, if they have a slowish hand the rest of the way, classic... Well, if they've only got lands left, I mean, that that hurts, honestly, but if we get a land right now, maybe we're not just utterly dead. Um, we could also put Sentinel down. What does that do for us? Allows uh, Sentinel instead of Angel allows for us to block uh, one of these flyers, which I think we need to be able to do. So we drop Sentinel and then uh, and then actually, yeah, it gives us a decent attack. Uh because we can stay vigilant, but also take out the eagle and the sentinel can't, this sentinel can't kill this one. So it's definitely a sentinel cast now. And the question is, is it too late? Because we're gonna take six, then we untap and we can take out the eagle, but it requires basically all of our mana to do so. And then they do that and it's basically over. Yeah, Oppo, you got pretty lucky, Colossus. Deck looks nice. Not saying deck's got a lot going for it, but uh, uh, stuck on two is just oh magic. I don't even think I'm gonna run the uh, mostly dead clip because I think we are just dead. I don't. There's nothing we can do to come back from that. Siphon, let's just make sure though, because if we, we could siphon to go to four, chump here, and then we survive. Should we survive? And... Except I just don't see what the avenue to a win is from here all right now we're super dead nice looking deck oppo wish we could have found the land to make it a uh, interesting game i think we would it would have matched up really well and been quite interesting if we just picked up a couple of lands two landers two landers and five landers Man, those hands. They trick you into a keep trick. I mean, I'm not saying it was incorrect to keep. I'm just saying two landers and five landers are the ones that go horribly awry. Another solid one. Even our, we even have the worst case of pumping Fenlurker on three is something to do on that turn. But we have Fenlurker, pump Fenlurker, a Johnny, if absolutely nothing else. 
Thanks, Chris. You give that Charlie a hug from me. Nice. Take a one drop. It's not amazing for us right now, per se, but one thing I like that it does is uh, it gives another body to protect a Johnny. Ah, and there's something to do on three. Coming up Millhouse this game. Right on, Pants Dragon. Welcome to the stream. Glad you could make it live. We're all happy to have you here. Um, I'll even just attack. If they want to attack back, eh, no, we'll say no attacks. I think it'll just hold them off. They'll be fine. Yeah, this ought to be this amazing card, but it uh, definitely suffers in this format. Even that's not going to be great for you. But right now I'm just going to Angel and pass. Try and control when this happens a little more to our advantage. Target acquired. I guess we're going to siphon next turn instead of a Johnny. Uh, and they get this one for free. Oh, heart piercer bow. Interesting. No, but we're just going to siphon here. They get a 2-2 vamp, but uh, Bo Skeleton threatens that. Moreland Inquisitor threatens to trade. All right. I should read a Johnny. What does a Johnny do? Um, you gain life equal to the number of creatures you control plus the number of planeswalkers you control. So uh, we can move our Angel of Vitality. Where are we at? 21. We could immediately get a 4-4. Uh, and threaten to trade with the Crasher if we do that part of a Johnny. Uh, I know he makes Pride Mates too, but I'm wondering if we want to uh, do the plus first and then uh, make Pride Mates after that. That seems good to me. Also, what's the zero? If you have at least 15 life more than your starting life total, exile... And, uh, oh, and each artifact and creature your opponents control. Okay. Friendship is the best cure. Uh, and I am going to leave everything back. Well, maybe not. Are we really going to block with Angel? I think uh, a Johnny can take a hit. We could chump. The vamp, you know. <clears throat> well, the reason to there, there's no re uh, there's no reason not to attack unless we are going to block, and I don't know if we want to block with this angel. <clears throat> Fenner just wants to block and let a Johnny win the game by himself. All right. Yeah, maybe uh, 
maybe they won't attack, but I think they'll go after Johnny. They have to. And with the Inquisitor and the ability to buy back the Skeleton, I kind of just like blocking it all. They gotta have, this one card has to be very good or they're just out of this. You can get the soul salvage here. Do you want a soul salvage or it's soul salvage and Fenlurk and then have the angel back. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, I can move uh, to be a little... Let's try... Uh, no, wait. Uh, battlefield... Here, let's try that. I can be here for right now. This might be better uh, with a Johnny out. <clears throat> yeah, we'll make a Pride Mate now. Hold on. Hopefully that should be back. Okay, uh, sorry, Oppo, not trying to mess with you. We're gonna go... Uh, let's make another cat soldier. Our true strength lies in our friendships. You want a plus a Johnny? I like just making threats. I mean, I guess now maybe he's in, like, uh... range of the, uh, the siphon or something. Well, ain't, nothing's gaining life here, so the angel didn't matter, right? Blackbeard says enough. I generally hang out over here because it allows me to like uh, right click on a card and you and people can see the rules text whereas if I'm if I'm over here it covers up that rules text so that's why I hang out over here so I'm gonna stay over here until uh, we have a planeswalker reason not to we'll keep this <clears throat> You know, I don't even know. I'm feeling a little overwhelmed by Wizards OP stuff. I don't know what's going on anymore. I think uh, we can risk a land here. Puts us a little farther away from Dawning Angel. But we have Inquisitor, Heartpiercer, Bow all set up. So I'm going to risk exiling a land. All right, there you go. A little back towards five with that. Oppo has kind of a free attack. I'm not going to block with the Inquisitor if they play a land. Not when we can... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me ask you something, Oppo. Oppo. 
How do you like them heart bows? Yeah, you're very big hearted. Normally that's a compliment. Yeah, I'm gonna attack. They may try to, they may pump the lurker, but then I'm willing to use the turn to uh, first strike. We'll basically trade our turns with each other here. Yeah, we'll see if they want to block. I'm assuming they'll block and make us use this this turn, which is fine. Mind rot, you say. Well, we're going to go thief and angel because we can just salvage them both back. And then they spent their turn mine rotting and we get to a Johnny. Should all strive for a peaceful resolution. True friends always stand by your side. Yeah. Generally if a Johnny feels pretty protected, you wanna make a make a pride mate. Right. Started off with a loss, but came back with a couple of wins. Looking a little more respectable there. You know that feeling you get when you remember you didn't eat breakfast? I'm getting that feeling now. It's like called hunger or something. I'm hungry. Um, my son uses Adobe Suites stuff to take to do his. It's kind of nice. He's a student, so he gets the we, we get him the uh, Adobe Suite for a Christmas subscription. And it's like it's it's totally reasonable price for now. He has. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It's like everything. <laughs> All the Adobe stuff <clears throat> uh, here. We're happy to keep this again. Nice little curve out into a Johnny. Sweet. Um, for uh, for Come Sail Away, that was made by Fiddles, right? I don't want to mis uh, attribute any of my memes. And then uh, Valhalla's Chosen made Chillbringer and Thunder Drake. So I don't know uh, what tools they used. Oh, baby. This will be interesting. Uh, it's in pacifism colors. Do we dare? Might want to wait till this is like our last card so it's not super punishing if they have pacifism. Like, we could totally re register now, but... No, I'm not going to do pat. I'm not running out the registrar into uh, planes, planes, and we have Angel of Vitality and a Daybla Daybreak Chaplain. Razor wants to risk my gems. Yeah, so this is a good feeler, right? They'll they'll use pacifism or removal here if they've got it. Um 
couple ways, a lot of ways we can go with this turn. Obviously, we have a Johnny. Um, we can do the Johnny thing that turns Angel into a big, big Angel right now. But we can do that with Siphon. Uh, I think Siphon Angel turns this Angel into a 4-4 immediately. We get more life. Uh, then we just have this turn next turn where we untap with a 4-4 Flyer and a 1-3. And we can drop a hyper-protected Johnny. So that's going to be my play. Yeah, um, thought about a Blade Brand threatening with a Chaplain, but if we did spend the two, unless we Blade Branded into something else for two, that would be it for our mana spend on the turn. We'd only spend half our mana, and then we would not get to attack with the 4-4. Four -four. So rather than just set that up, I felt it was correct to just go for that big attack. And now we could consider it, but I, th I think... Uh, I think just... Uh, Making a Johnny, making a Pride Mate, and attacking with everything here. Everyone belongs in a place that they can call home. My pride grows Well, strong. we could even leave Angel of Vitality back. Hmm. I'm trying to decide if we want to be aggressive. I think, I think they're low enough we just want to be aggressive. This is fine. Even if they did something to us... Uh, like take out a Johnny here. Like they pacify the pride mate and successfully kill a Johnny. Like we're just, who cares? They, they have other problems such that that would actually be good for us. If they spent all their turn on a Johnny, we would, it would probably secure our victory. So now I like uh, Heart Piercer Bow equip onto Daybreak, ping the Angel. And. Then we have the Blade Brand play. Yeah, plus a Johnny. Uh, trying to figure out plus or minus on a Johnny is really what it was about, but I think we will go plus here. I sense the good in your heart. If we attack all with everything and they just take it so they can take out a Johnny, again, that's just good for us. I'm gonna keep pushing it. Now Donning Angel doesn't even kill a Johnny and they can't really afford to send a blocker anyway. Well, they're not dead, 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 dead. Um, oh, yeah, let's see. Oh, yeah, sorry. Zero. <laughs> we can't. I, uh, we must regroup. That works. That's the first time I've ever ultimated a Johnny, so... Oh, yeah, uh... Too late. Still had all these dinosaurs. All right, let's update this record. 
now we're rolling. I mean, the deck has been great every time we've had good mana. <laughs> All right, so Fiddle says, uh, ask, I have heard people say recently that Wizards is pushing Constructed because it sells more cards, but everyone I know that plays Constructed just buys singles anyway. Any insights? Well, um, but pushing Constructed, like increasing demand for Constructed increases demand for singles. Increasing the demand for singles raises the price on those singles such that boxes become worth cracking by stores to open to supply the sing sing singles and those booster boxes are what wizards is selling so uh i don't see how the notion of wizards pushing constructed and your friends buying singles are uh, are incompatible in the goal to for wizards to generate more profit right um it's like the, the cards have to come from somewhere so if if constructed is super popular and especially if there's a lot of diverse decks and people are tempted to i want to have two decks this standard format or whatever that just drives demand for singles and the demand for singles being driven up uh, demands drives up the value in just cracking open boxes to sell singles yeah thanks d turns out johnny is good There's lots of interesting choices with a Johnny. It's really difficult to figure out which way to win. Another nice opener. And we even picked up our second planes, so our mana is now like perfect. Give us a target. Give us a target. Yes. I mean, they get a card off it, but we got a target. And we got a Johnny. Clean living, folks. Arena tends to be additive. Like, let me ask you this. I mean, this is somewhat rhetorical. I mean, you can answer in chat if you want, but philosophically speaking, like if you were someone who played in stores before and didn't play like pre arena, did you think about how much you played in stores and now post arena, how much do you play in stores? Ha like has your, has your spending on stores and on sing and paper singles truly dropped off as a result of your adoption of arena and i and for most people the answer is like no it hasn't dropped off that much at all like basically for the most part arena spend ends up kind of being an uh, uh an additive thing and yes we are going to attack ping it and uh, do the cutthroat game right and arena bringing people back also, like, to the extent that any experienced longtime player is playing less paper because of Arena, it's almost certainly made up for by the number of people coming back to the game or being introduced to the game by Arena. Epicure is solid, but we have the tools here. We're just going to uh, pre-siphon it for three and then chaplain it dead the rest of the way. I mean, we got a Johnny on the horizon, but there's no real reason to run him out there uh, when we have these good plays to set up a, a better protected board.
Okay, now we can have Johnny up front and uh, Chaplin kind of makes them somewhat obligated to block. I think we, I think I'm gonna ping the burglar to encourage him to block with the thief and then blade brand the, the thief, but we're gonna have Johnny. I am a Johnny Goldman. And uh, start with a soldier. I am proud of those who walk beside me. Then it kind of looks like I'm willing to trade the chaplain for the blood burglar. And the if they double block. So this also oh, I should have sent the cutthroat as well. I was so uh, so so focused in on my chaplain play, I just forgot to attack with a cutthroat. That's a little little uh punt. Oh sorry, D I'll swap that uh, in just a second here. Um, but yeah, should, we should be attacking with the cutthroat. No reason not to. And sorry, you wanted, let's see, swap link for the space box. All right. Oh, I missed it. They uh, siphoned to Johnny. Okay. Good work, Oppo. We're still going to get you. Start it here. Uh, yeah, Blade Brand East. Uh, Heart Piercer Bow does the damage, not the creature. So it doesn't work. That combo is a non bow. Uh, but it's not a non-bow to siphon this burglar, ping this vampire of the dire moon, and cause our opponent to scoop. I do like this one, D. It's like, uh, I love, I love Space 1990, like, that, that... You know, that it was made at a time where conceptually 1999 could be this era in which we were doing, you know, fighting aliens on other planets. <clears throat> oh, we got Link back to the top right. I will put, let's see, what's the, we'll put space over on the Mirrodin slot so it still has a high place of honor. And then get Link back. I think they were kind of giving up that game. That's what it felt like. I can do that for you. I'm going to say you have to uh, redeem a highlighted message to get me to straighten the uh, little lunch boxes. How are they? Pretty good now? All right. Lots of blades here, we'll keep it. Both are colors of mana. Nice opener. Ooh. Swap Sesame Street with Link, you say? All right. Shots fired. Eventually we're gonna run out. Where's Sesame? Uh... Why am I missing Sesame Street? Sesame Street. Oh, here we can do this Sesame Street. Wow, that 
it's linked off camera, folks. What are you going to do about that? Oh, man. All right. Uh, I'm going to start with the Inquisitor over the blade here. Yeah, my arms don't work anymore. I can't. Sorry, I can't fix the lunch boxes anymore. Welcome, Mabinap. Good time zone. Yeah, everybody got excited about uh, the old M20. It kind of crushed the uh, the pole, really. All right, even picked up the thief for three. Now we can pick up uh, planes. As long as we're calling perfect shots off the top of the library, how about a planes next? You never played M20 East? I really liked it. It may be one of, I, th I, I might just call it my favorite corset draft of all time. I think they found some really fun stuff to do with it. White was a little uh, light on uh, the kind of playability you want to see, but I mean, we're playing it and doing okay. Not quite as balanced as you want, but I thought ultimately quite fun. Uh, we're going to attack with both. We have a blade brand on the block. Oh, man. That's great. Now just give us a land off this blade brand, please. No, they're just saying, like, no, nope, not even going to block. That's fine. That means we'll play a Sentinel instead. Some say I never heard of you, a rap burglar. Thank you so much for that sub. Gift from Fiddles. All right, well, <clears throat> you can see the writing on the wall here. We're, we're definitely going to get rid of this Sentinel. It's just going to cost us uh, one of our creatures. But it gets, it's still a two for two, and we draw. So it's actually, it ends up being like a, what is it? A, we get a three. It's an advantage, a one card advantage to us, almost no matter how they do this. So I'm going to send in everything. Um, <clears throat> And then we can choose whether to cutthroat kill or blade brand kill. <laughs> He's your your patron, East. Let's see, if we do the blade brand kill, we get to follow with a 2-2, two -two, or we just wait and we draw cards. We But we don't really need cards right now. So I actually like just dropping the 3-3. Three -three. Because either way, our thief dies. Like, we have we have a lot of action, so I'm, I don't care if we, like, Fill, get more action in our hand. Might as well do it this way. Keep the pressure on. <clears throat> Decide which action to use. Gauntlets of Light has beaten me, but I just want to bring up Gaunt Gauntlets of Light for a second and say, suck it, Gauntlets of Light. You're an aura. I punished you, aura. That's what we do. We punish auras. So, um, <clears throat> if we bow and equip, we only have we have we have the blade brand activation. I guess we just attack, and then if they with everything, if they block the Inquisitor, we get to first strike blade brand. And if they trade with the Cutthroat, that's fine. Four bows in this deck. Perfect.
pretty hard for them to come back from this. Why so many bows? Uh, because once you get a density of bows at like three, three, I like four. Actually, I think four is about perfect. Uh, you first, a single bow ends up being pretty useful in the format. Uh, we've made it extra useful with our uh, double Fathom Fleet Cutthroat. So we have interactions with bow even without multiples. But then once you get two, like when you get, if you have four bows, the uh, chances of drawing two before the end of the game are pretty high. And once you have two bows, you basically close out your opponent from playing two toughness creatures. And um, that's an incredible advantage to basically say, we're going to blank all your twos now. Uh, we can play the Dawning Angel, but if we wait and Vitality first, like we go Vitality Blade here, uh, we can Dawning Angel next turn. Still get the same amount of power on board. In fact, more power. Uh, and then the angel gets the, the life gain is more important. It probably doesn't matter in this game, honestly, but I'm, you know, thinking in terms of board control and abstract strategy. That's the way I would play this. Because. Uh, yeah, I guess we could have moved the blade. That's true. That would have been a fine line also. I was uh, thinking of it more like germ, actually, that if we moved the blade, it would kill the creature. But yeah, that could have worked. That was fine, too. Is having an oppo play a Cavalier of Gales into your Narset in a Fire's Mirror the best feeling in Magic? Uh, it's up there. How about... Uh, Someone wheel of fortuning into Narset or something. Well, after stumbling on mana in our first game, we have been steamrolling since. Do I still draft paper? Um, not much, but I didn't draft paper much before anyway. Where they've lost, uh, rev it also, kind of before before Arena, I was drafting at Wizards. You know, it's, it's been a long time since I was a normal paper customer without a dig you know, without a digital option. Uh, can we, I, I'm leaning to keep this because of the blade and the splicer. Uh, we're on the play, though. This is pretty bad, having four planes. It's effectively like a mulligan, like we're already at six in some ways. It's like this fourth planes is very unlikely to be relevant to this game. Uh, but this is a pretty decent six as far as that goes. Blade, splicer, sure thing. Um, it's really tough. We also, we have nine swamps. We have more swamps than planes. So I'm going to keep, but this is a, on the edge for me. I'm not sure where you all think where it landed on that. If anybody out there is snap mole or snap keep, but I found that to be pretty close. We have a lot of bad draws is the problem, um, which is one way to look at a mulligan. Like if we keep this, what percentage of our, our what percentage of our deck is bad draws and every planes is a bad draw so we've got uh four bad planes draws and every black card is a bad draw right now so we just have a lot of bad draws but everything else is a good draw Mr. Dub's in the tank over there. Oh, like I can complain. How many times has my oppo gone? What is they? What are they doing over there?
Uh, I think if that happens, someone would get fired, D. D. <laughs> is definitely not the plan. All right, we got there on Swamp. Now, basically only planes are bad draws in the deck. I don't really want another Swamp at this point, but our density of quality draws has shot up with that Swamp. I don't mind that. Disfigure on effectively a 1-1. We get the blade. Blade will go nice on the thief, I bet. Ooh. Although uh, the presence of Vile says, if we drop the thief here, we're forcing them to use the Vial on their turn. Uh, but if we wait, I'm gonna wait and I think the thief is important enough here that we're going to hope they uh, tap down below to below three mana, you know, below two mana here. They play something. All right, they got a thief of their own, and we get to disfigure it. So this is actually working out perfectly. Because now we get to uh, protect our thief with the blade. And the vial can't get it no more. Could have gone with Splicer too, but I like getting the thief going while the coast is relatively clear. There's not a lot of cards they can play that effectively block a 3-3 thief for four. The Tribute of Wand is definitely not one of those cards. I uh, don't need to play the swamp yet. Might as well attack. I mean, we're almost certain to play that swamp, but no need to do it yet. Yeah, splice it up. What's going on, Fool Auto? How you been? All right, Blade Brand shows up like it's nothing, like it's no big deal. When actually it's amazing and we're going to attack with everything. Actually, Registrar is a reason to kind of stop playing lands at five. Didn't really think about that, but it's going to work out, I think. the blade on the splicer i mean the vial can still get it but it, the vial could get it before it's just that uh i would rather have the splicer be something they have to actually think about and respect in the damage race rather than make one of these big dudes even bigger all right they had the answer for our uh our first registrar of the day but i still think we're in good shape here eh, not if we keep drawing nothing but land though All right, they use their vial. Eventually we figured that would happen. They did, now we get to play Inquisitor, put the equip right back on it. A couple of three threes, one of them first strike looks pretty good. Yeah, these had uh, like, I mean, to close it out for sure, we just want to get some action, of course, but I'm just saying uh, we draw lands, they draw a couple of reasonable cards and we could be suddenly facing stable instead of pressuring our advantage, uh, you know, using our advantage to pressure them. In this case, looks like they want to go wand and uh, two tokens on the 3-3 three, three on the golem. All right, that's interesting. I guess... That makes some sense, but... We're, we're ahead now, but you know, they draw murder and boom, suddenly we are facing a stable opponent, you know? But let's find some action.
Action. Well, we can pump that pretty big. Call that action. Yeah, retributive wand is not great. I mean, I'm okay with a heart piercer bow throwing one point around, but this is pretty darn clunky. No discard value from friend lurker, but uh... oh, that's true. Well, if they want to spend uh, their time on the friend lurker, that's fine. I should have held it though. There's no reason to to have done it. If we get one more swamp, we could have uh, held kept it alive. Yeah, sack it and deal five to the Inquisitor. I don't know. I mean, there's got to be sacrifice stuff. I don't know what that combo would be exactly. Deck doing its best to uh, give this game back to Oppo. Hmm. Any reason to hold all this land or play all this land? We have a skeleton that needs to be able to have some mana. Nah, there's nothing really. I guess soul salvage is a reason to play out land. So we soul salvage, it's like drawing cards. We want to have the land to replay the creatures. Unless we've already used it or something. No, it didn't. Okay. As I said, this deck is trying to get Oppo back into it. Yeah, moving the moving the equipment would have been absolutely correct. A good call, AVB. Just completely missed that line. Well, the good news is we don't have that much land left in our deck, but sure, let's lose this one. Let's somehow lose this one. Now I might save a couple for mine rot protection, although we're probably going to run out everything we get. Soul Mender, really? Or a whatever, Platinum, whatever this is, and you're... I mean, maybe you've got... I said there's reason, you know, there are scenarios where you could justify a Soul Mender. I think they're pretty rare, though. This is redonkulous. Yeah, but an Epicure is not enough. I mean, again, I just don't think that's a combo. Wow, you're going to attack instead of gain? Yeah, just gain. Just nullify the Daybreak. <sighs> Hot stuff here. Only a 4 in 19 chance now to draw land. I can't believe we're going to lose this. All right. Maybe we won't. That's a good a good piece of action there. Good piece of action. 3 4 5 6 seven. Oppo has eight lands. We have uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I'm going to go ahead and say Oppo is not flooding out quite like we are. I mean, maybe this is a land. Maybe they have nine, but still. Well, Robert, um, the bots are still making decisions. If uh, several bots to your right found red cards they fought, thought were worth taking and did settle in, then you just wouldn't have any, you know? Well, 
Like if Mr. Dubs would like to draw land until he has as many as I do, that would be wonderful. No sense blocking there. We're just gonna try and win with the angel. Uh, it's a three turn clock though, because of the soul mender. Although that helps, that doesn't actually change the clock, um, but we can take out the soul mender. It does mean they can't send both the cutthroat and the epicure unless they have a creature to drop as well, or our crackback is lethal. Hmm. Well, they're pausing, but the Soul Mender could be the reason for any of their pauses here. We'll see if there's a pause after we kill the Soul Mender. Yeah, now the pauses have stopped. I don't think, can't think of a spell that takes us from 13 to zero here in black or white. Uh, the plus two plus one adds four, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. That gets them 11, but not a win. So we're gonna say no blocks. And with Sanitarium, uh, they may be baiting us into an attack where <clears throat> By sending in both, we lose to a crackback, but hopefully Skeleton protects us against that if they have found something here. Ooh, not for the angel. They found murder. Unreal. I mean, that was a top deck, you understand. They had no murder last turn. Yeah, Skeleton uh, operates on some level like a murder of the Epicure. Come on, deck. This has been cute and funny and all. <laughs> but come on. Yeah, we got, let's see, what are, what are some of our awesome outs? We have um, a Johnny, a Soul Salvage, uh, two, count them, two. Agonizing Siphons, but of course, Oppo gets the Soul Salvage. Sure. We have the Registrar, but I don't know if that actually is good for us. If that's what you mean by T-Rex. Really, I just want an Agonizing Siphon off the top. Can we just... Oh, right. There's Reggie. Oh, thought for a second. Well, uh, we get to attack with Daybreak and what do we want to kill though? I guess just one of the Epicures.
Still alive indeed. Your friend here is only mostly dead. We have a double block opportunity here. Put skeleton and cutthroat on the epicure, and then. Uh, we're one draw away from being stable. I think we have to go for the kill of the Epicure here. I can't think of a reason to return Skelly multiple times. We don't have any, like, sacrifice tricks or anything like that. What a yoke. All right. Uh, I guess we take out their Fathom fleet and have our own and have good blocks. Yeah, I, I'm actually happy with this uh, risky block for them. Um, we could take out the thief, but I'd be happy if they attacked with the thief and, and you lost that life. I guess we have enough, let's see, five, six, seven. Yeah, I'm gonna play land because we have like five drops and four drops in our yard and we have a soul salvage. So I wanna keep all the options open. Soul salvage into a five and a four and cast it all. At least do something with our flood. Five, six, seven, eight. All right, that's what we wanted to see. Uh, now we're gonna attack with the uh, cutthroat and ping the ox. And then they're damned if they do, damned if they don't. Feeling a little better about our chances, but they could be a siphon off the top away from killing us too. So certainly this game is open to debate. But we held, man. Whoo, that was some uh, that was some screw to overcome. We got there. <clears throat> Not screw, you know, you know what I mean. Flood to overcome. And we're at 6-1. We got a foul to give on our way to 7. Let's see what happens. Thanks for hanging, Combustionator. We'll see you next week. Appreciate the bits, Razor. Pass the hat. I'm effectively a magic street busker. Yeah, we'll do 10 life next. And then uh, I'll take a little break and we'll do some constructed. Another two lander keep that could go fine or it could go awfully. That's a great start. Great start. 
We now have a turn three play. And of course, if we get any more land, it turns on the rest of our hand. Ooh, now we have a different turn three play to consider. I guess we'll find out, Mama. All right. Well, now we've got interesting choices. I think I'm going to hold off on Reggie. Yeah, I don't think we want to discard any of this sweet stuff yet. Reggie will take over just fine when he does. Uh, for now, we're going to go Sentinel and work into our four drops and try to get this hand cut down a little bit before we start losing half of it or losing one a turn. They aren't in white, but they're in blue, which means they could bounce it. I forget exactly. There's unsummon, right? And unsummon with uh, the trigger on the stack is pretty rough. Well, I'm going to attack with both. Happily uh, delay, you know, if they want to block skeleton. I mean, we're just telegraphing. They should they should read this. Yeah, they, they can see. Um, but I'm just going to have the backup plan of... Um, well, we could just... I could... Yeah, I'm going to siphon. Yeah, we could... Uh, Johnny and Pride Mate, but then we're kind of forced to block. We go plot... Pride Mate Sentinel on Octoprofit, right? And I don't know if I love that spot. I want to play a Johnny when I have the Skeleton back to a Chump. So I'm going to go with the Siphon play this turn. Well, now let's think about it, because we? we can um, send in <clears throat> the cutthroat. They're playing around the cutthroat. They seem to know the cutthroat. So <clears throat> uh, if we sent in both the Sentinel and the Skeleton, though, well, we're still going to do it. And the Sentinel has vigil Vigilance, so it's still an attack with both. Again, we're fully telegraphed, but what are you going to do then? they can do that and we can go <sighs> fathom fleet or we could just reggie here uh start keeping this land in hand and reggie i'm gonna do that now it's reggie reggie and hold land seems good we have two discards at the ready uh plus two great plays coming up so the timing is fine It's a very careful tap, which either suggests they're trying to disguise the fact that they don't have one of these two colors in hand, or they are just being super careful about something. Uh, let's try the cutthroat approach again here. Again, they know it's coming, but again, shouldn't matter and i'll t even take the tracker at this point if they just want to block uh oh maybe they have a uh, pump what do they what, what do we have we have the growth cycle could be growth cycle but i actually kind of love this i think we can't it's tough to lose from here And now we can even play out our swamp since uh, Reggie's dead. Hmm, decent. So 
So we can go Angel of Vitality, get Skeleton back, and then next turn go a Johnny and have Skeleton on D. If we play a Johnny now, um, we are put in a spot where the spider attacks and something basically has to chump, unless we want to minus uh, make a 2-2 Cat Soldier and threaten a double block with Cat Soldier. Yeah. Just working it through, and I think that's correct. I think that's stronger than just trying to set up the skeleton. Spider wants a Johnny next turn. I think uh, with this situation and them on one card, uh, we can make a pride mate. And we're in a, we feel like we're in a very good spot here. Yeah, Druid doesn't matter at all. They have to start throwing the spider away if they're going to get anywhere. Uh, now we can Vitality, Skelly, play Skelly, and plus. Friendship. That's a bit of all right. Griffin is vigilant, but attacks into a 3-5 reach doesn't seem correct. Wow, epic response from Oppo. Time to rebuild. Uh, we have five, six, seven, eight mana. Uh, I guess we use... We could go... Uh... A Johnny. Well, we can't do a Johnny and uh, Angel and Sentinel. We can only do a Johnny and Fathom Fleet for little value. So yeah, I actually like uh, Griffin, Angel, Sani, and then next turn we have these ready. A Johnny Skeleton is solid too. I mean, what are they gonna do? Yeah, I think I'm on a Johnny minus Skelly actually. I think that's better. All strive for a peaceful resolution. True friends always stand by your side. Oh, you're one turn late, Fen Lurker. That would have been fun to cast last turn. We go. Now we go Vitality, Sentinel. I guess we play the Lurker. Find your inner strength. I think moving uh, towards a Johnny Ultimate is the play here. Like, they got to deal with a Johnny right now or we just win, right? There are 13, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So maybe we don't just win. But I don't see <laughs> Yeah. They could see the uh, ultimate coming. All right. We have learned that a Johnny is a good reason to be in white in the format. Oh, yeah. I guess the, the yeah, we did, we did have uh, ultimate coming, uh, win coming. All right.
Nice. Good way to start our Friday. Let's claim this prize. Likely to be some gem grind, but if we get mythics, those will be fresh. Gem grind. All right, uh, 40 more in gem grind that we'll add to that lovely little total. And uh, I'm going to say goodbye to YouTube. Thanks for hanging out, YouTubers, and we'll catch you next time. I'm going to do a uh, wacky 10 life draft next, and we'll throw that up over the weekend probably, so look out for that. And uh, thanks for hanging. See you next draft.